Hi, my name is Andrew, and I'd like to show you some of my plugins that I use uh, in particular for Rust development. I'm going to start with Sideways, a plugin that lets you move uh, function arguments between, you know, to the left or to the right. It doesn't work only for functions, it works for uh, template arguments as well, it works for list arguments, uh, really anything that is delimited by some sort of delimiter and starts and ends in you know, some sort of, a, let's say, bracket. Um, this takes care of nesting, you know, uh, it respects nesting, and apart from giving you the ability to move them left and right, it also gives you the ability to just um, operate them on them with uh, text object. Um, for instance, I can change this entire uh, last argument to sum, open up a new variable definition, and paste the code that I just uh, cut. Um, that's an easy way to do you know, to extract variables, for instance. Um, this also works for multi-line uh, arguments, multi-line you know, list items. And um, apart from moving things around here, uh, I, what I can also do is use a switch plugin to switch between true and false. Very simple, not super useful. But also in the case of Rust, um, you can switch between the shorthand version of a struct field and the long version of the struct field with a separate name and value. Um, and you can do this, let's say you can say, uh, oh, I want to add a process here, you know, some sort of a function call to massage this value, uh, which is why I need to expand it. But now that I think about it, let me just extract it to a variable, call it input again, shadow it, paste it here. And now that it has a name, same name, uh, I can uh, compact it again into the short form. Another thing I can do on structs is join them up. And split them back into multiple lines. This comes from the split join plugin. Split join lets you operate on multi-line code to join it in a single line or single line code to expand it. And you can see that this is pretty simple in the case of, a, you know, of an if clause. It's also kind of simple in the case of a struct, but it uh, doesn't just mechanically split the lines. For instance, the last argument here doesn't end with a comma, but if I split it up, it does end in the comma with uh, in the multi one version, because you know this is a pretty sensible convention. This is optional, uh, but for example, this is what I like. And what I mean to say here is that the plugin doesn't just split the lines; it actually transforms the code in a sensible way. For a closure, for example, uh, it's going to turn turn this entire closure into its block form. You can add a print here. Uh, do some logging, do whatever, uh, maybe add you know, a couple of a couple of more lines, but um, you know, and you, you can still merge it up. But you can see that now it merges it. It you know, still keeps the block form because this is the equivalent code. Um, if you split it back up, down, I suppose, and you remove this line, you can join it into um, a non, you know, into a single expression again. It gets even more complicated for match statements. Um, you know, this little question mark here can be transformed into uh, a full-blown match statement with uh, an OK, an error. And the reason it gets transformed into this in particular is because uh, the plugin looks upwards for the function uh, definition, and it sees that it returns an er a result, uh, which is why it transforms it particularly into this. Now, if you have a question mark, and we change this to some sort of an option, we can split this into a none and some statement. And you can also split these individual match statements into the block form, and you can say, uh, you know, print line uh, none one or something, and you know, debug the different uh, print statements, figure out what exactly is happening, figure out which kind of, which value is returning none, and then when you're done, uh, you can merge it back into uh, a much shorter form. Now, the last plugin I'd like to show you also has to do with question marks. Uh, you see, people told me, well, the question mark operator is really nice, but it's kind of small, and error handling, you know, shouldn't be this difficult to, to see, right? And I said, don't worry, I can, I can make it easier to see. So I wrote the disco command. It takes a question mark operator, and it highlights the question mark operator in ooh, the best way that I could think of, just blinking between red and blue. Um, I think it'd be a lot easier to see now. Um, and you can use this for, you know, other stuff as well. If you like to, let clauses, whatever you like, whatever kind of pattern you'd like to highlight. I would not actually recommend you use this. Um, you know, there's, there's probably better ways to uh, highlight your code if you need to. 
but it is kind of a fun party trick. Um, and you can find it on GitHub as discothek.vim. Um, you can find a nice GIF that describes it as well. And you can find all the other plugins as well. Split join um, that switches between multi one and single line code. Um, Switch.vim that switches between you know, predetermined like, small bits of text. And sidewage that lets you operate on um, list items or you know like function arguments. Um, all of these plugins individually um, are maybe you know, not that impressive or you wouldn't use them that often, but as a whole, they give you a different perspective on code. They give you the tools to shape the code in whatever form you like, make it a lot more comfortable to refactor it and reshape it. Um, so that's pretty much it. Uh, thank you very much for your time and happy Viming.